everyone and welcome to today's uh, presentation on accessibility features for Google Chromebooks. Before we start, I'm just going to double check that I can hear myself. Yep, you can hear me. <laughs> That's good news. Um, yeah, so my name is Niall Ridgway. I'm going to be talking to you today about using accessibility features for Google Chromebooks. If you want to leave us any feedback, you can comment on the live comments on YouTube or you can tweet us using the hashtag LDL. 2021. Um, you can use that on Twitter, you could use it on Facebook, use it on Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever you're using. Um, use the hashtag LDL2021. Okay. So a little bit about me. My name is Niall Ridgway. I am currently the primary one two teacher in Merkins Primary School in Inverness. I was previously an additional support needs teacher um, where yeah, I worked with children from all the way from nursery up to primary seven um, and yeah supported every and all additional support need. Um, I'm currently based in Inverness. I know that people from all across the world are watching this so I've put up a wee map there just to show you where Inverness is. It's a tiny little city up at the top of Scotland and you'll see there that I have uh, listed on my badges. I forgot to put in Moat <laughs> um, which is a new one that I've recently got. Um, so yeah, you've learned a little bit about me. I would love to know a little bit about whoever is watching too. So pop your name into the comments, uh, maybe, or even just a little bit about you, um, maybe where you are or what you are, are, are teaching. I would love to know who is watching this. Uh, tweet me at Niall Ridgway, which is my name. It should be, there we are, just uh, down below the video screen. Um, yeah, let me know what you're thinking. Um, so yeah, let's begin. Today's plan, so what is accessibility? Uh, then we'll look at turning on your accessibility settings. It does my head in that this is a hidden feature and that we have to turn this on. Um, I, I'm presuming that in the future it will be turned on for everyone. Um, you might have put it on by accident, but I'm gonna show you how to do that today and how to get your accessibility settings turned on. We're gonna have a look at using accessibility settings and then we'll have a chance for you to leave any questions or comments um, throughout, but at the end, we'll have a wee look for these. So what, what are the accessibility settings? What, what is accessibility needs? Well, uh, the accessibility settings are a group of settings that add extra value to the user. You don't necessarily have to have an additional support need to need to use the accessibility settings. And in fact, I use them every day um, just to support me. Um, with, with my learning and my own learning and with my teaching as well. Using the Google Google website, this is uh, some of the, this is what they're saying about the, the use of accessibility settings. So they're saying Chromebooks come with helpful accessibility features created using inclusive design principles and based on user feedback to empower people with disabilities to learn, play and connect. Again, I would add in, you do not need an additional support need to take advantage of these accessibility settings. They're gonna help you with your teaching. They're gonna help you just with your daily uh, using of the Chromebook. Some of these settings should be things that should just be happening anyway. Um, so yeah, let's jump straight in. So we're gonna turn on our accessibility settings now. They are, now I've had to move my screen so it looks the same as everyone else. I usually put my, uh, my taskbar, so down at the bottom, I usually have that on the left-hand side. Um, so I've popped on the bottom because I think everybody else has, has theirs there. So down in the bottom right, you're gonna click just on that wee bubble where it's got the time, your battery, your Wi-Fi, and any notifications. You're gonna click there, and you're gonna click on the settings cog, okay? The settings cog. Don't worry about noting this down. I'm gonna give you a chance to do that in just a minute, okay? You're then gonna hit advanced on the bottom left, and you'll see the accessibility settings are hidden down in the bottom left-hand side um, under the advanced tab. So you can click accessibility, and then you can click always show accessibility system, uh, sorry, accessibility options in the system menu, okay? So what that's gonna do is, you see here, um, I have this little person with the word accessibility. When you click on this option um, on the settings, you will get this little person appearing and that's your quick access to the accessibility settings. So you now have a minute and a half to turn them on. Here is a GIF just showing you what, you're, what the, st the steps that you need to take to turn on your settings. Um, 
try turning them on. Now, if you don't have a Chromebook in front of you, then just write them down, just write down the steps. Um, so all we did was we clicked on the time, click on the settings cog, advanced, accessibility, and we turned them on. So you've got a minute to do that thing. Okay, that should be your time up there. Um, yeah, so now you should have your accessibility settings turned on. Let's have a look at what they can do. So when you click on that little person in the bottom right hand corner, um, you'll see this is what they look like here. I've zoomed in a little bit. What options do you get? Well, uh, for the quick options, you get Chrome Vox, which is spoken feedback. Um, I will show you a video soon of what that is like. Um, the Chrome Vox is essentially any words that are on the screen, it will read it back to you. All words on the screen. Um, you can turn on your select to speech and your dictation. These are just fancy ways to say text to speech and speech to text. Okay, so it will either read the screen back to you or it will allow you to speak the words um, that you want onto your, your Google Doc or whatever. You can turn on high contrast mode. You will laugh at the photos of them when we get to them because when I took a screenshot of the screen, it still kept it in normal color viewing mode um, instead of high contrast mode because it's a, a, a layer that they'll put over um, to support you. So I had to take photos on my phone instead. Um, yeah, there's some not good <laughs> selfies appearing in the background. Um, you get the full screen magnifier. I'll show you a video on how to use that in just a minute. And the docked magnifier, again, I'll show you how to use that. We've got automatic clicks. So when you just put your mouse over something, um, it will click for you. You've got the on-screen keyboard. That is great because that is where your emojis are hidden on your Chromebook, okay? Um, so everyone, needs to know this. Uh, you can use Emojipedia, which is great for getting your emojis, but if you just want them on your Chromebook, just quickly, bam, done, on-screen keyboard is where to get them. You've also got additional settings. So large mouse cursor, I'm not sure, uh, on the stream it shows up as a small mouse cursor. On my screen, um, it appears as a large mouse cursor. If I shared my whole screen, um, I'm sure that's what you'd be able to see. Um, when you're recording videos using the large mouse cursor is great because it supports the, the early years especially to see where you're pointing to. If you're in a classroom as well, using the large mouse cursor makes it so much easier for anyone who's at the back of the room to see what you're doing. Um, so obviously when we're sharing our screen just now, it's a bit hard to see, um, but when you're in a classroom, it makes it so much easier. So everyone should just have a large mouse cursor on all the time. Um, I've also got just linked in below that and um, we've got highlight mouse cursor is the next kind of tick down um, so that will put again you can't see that I'm looking at the stream just now um, so that will put a red ring around where your mouse is just again to make it easier to see you've also got mono audio so instead of having uh, when you're listening to music um, say the, the music pans to the right and then to the left or you've got drums in the right and guitar in the left and um, it's just going to have the same instruments and same sound coming out of both ears you've also got so if you've only got one headphone you can listen to all the sounds in just one headphone you've got highlight text carrot as well um, which will allow you to use your keyboard to navigate through like the internet and, and um, on the the chromebook you've got highlight object with keyboard focus so anywhere that you can type it puts a dotted line around it and sticky keys lastly as well especially in the early years when you're trying to get people to do control and C and control V, the, the, the fine motor skills there and the dexterity needs to be worked on. Um, so you can use the sticky keys to support all learners by just hitting control and then C. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our cursor color. Like I said, it doesn't really show up on the presentation, so I've recorded a quick GIF um, that you will see. Uh, yes, that is working um, for my 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 mouse changing color. So yep, you can see that color change. Um, I've also clicked on the show mouse cursor to turn that on, and I've clicked adjust cursor size and made it as big as I can, um, just because it it helps everyone. Um, like I said, with when we're sharing our screen, so things like Google Meet, when you're sharing your whole screen, you can see the large mouse cursor, but when you're sharing your tab in the window, it doesn't work. Um, I wish I could have shared my whole screen with you, but I've, I've got everything cramped into, into one screen today. Um, but yeah, so it, it does, it helps everyone if you've got that large mouse cursor. Um, yeah. What was that on the... Oh, that's fine. It's just a picture. So using the docked magnifier, if you want to highlight anything or show anyone in a zoomed in, zoomed in fashion, then you can use the docked magnifier. It's not going to take over your whole screen. Uh, so you can see here that that's what the large mouse cursor looks like. I have just recorded myself quickly using the docked magnifier and just zoomed in on those dinosaurs just so that you can see what that looks like. This works really well if you are wanting to highlight a particular word that you want in your class to read. Um, again, especially in the early years, um, you can use this to support your reading of, of, of sounds. Just focus on one word, zoom in on that one word, and get the child to read that word, and then you can move on to the next one. It means you're not looking at a whole screed of, of, of information. You've just got that zoomed in one there. We've got the full screen magnifier as well, so I'm going to show you a quick video. Now, this is harder to navigate um, because it zooms in your whole screen, please be aware, um, and you can adjust the screen zoom levels as well, as you will see. So I'm going to show you. So here I turn on full screen magnifier, and it's on times two, and then I zoom. It can go all the way out to times 20. I'm going to go to times eight, and as you can see, you can hardly move around the screen and um, if you had a bigger screen or multiple screens this would work really well um, and all you do to move around the zoomed in screen is you just hover your mouse say you want to go right hover your mouse to the right or that way on through the video um, and it will um, move your screen to the right okay so that's just what the the whole screen and full screen magnifier looks like nope don't play that again there we go like I said, <laughs> taking um, screenshots of the high contrast mode did not work. So I've had to get some some pictures. They were shockingly bad selfies, essentially, because my lap, my Chromebook screen acted like a mirror. Um, so I tried to do it against the, the, the background last night or yesterday. Um, so what it does is it inverts the colors. So white goes to black, um, and it just makes it easier to see. It's kind of like using night mode, maybe, on your, your phone or your Chromebook. Uh, or uh, whatever device you're using. Um, yeah, it makes kind of the backgrounds black so it's easier to read. You can use screen spoken feedback as well. So this is quite a big video. This is gonna show you how you can use the Chrome, the, oh, what's it called? Chromevox, Chromevox spoken feedback. Okay, so I'm gonna show you that just now. Created. Speak text under the mouse. Tick box. Ticked. Read numbers is. Punctuation echo. Announce download notifications. Turn off sticky mode when editing text. Smart sticky mode. When, pl when playing audio. Play when playing audio. Play at lower volume when Chromebox is speaking. Button has select current voice. Select current English. So So I'm just going to add in quickly, just so that you can see here, I have gone through, and I'm going to show you how to do it in just a second. I've gone through and I've added in some more uh, voices that, uh, that that you can use on your Chromebook, um, specifically English received pronunciation, England English with a Scottish accent, and Gaelic Scottish as well. I still prefer to use the Chrome OS US English. Um, I, I find that it's easier to, to hear but your learners may prefer to hear hear these things. Um, so I'm just going to play that again. Thank you. 
Thanks. Oops. Okay. So now that we've watched that, so that gives you an idea of using the the Chrome Vox. Um, so what that essentially is, is it will read whatever is on your screen. Uh, the first thing I did was I changed it to anything under the mouse. Um, I find I found that was better. Uh, hold on, what's going on here? Um, because otherwise it would just read the whole screen and it was becoming uh, very loud in the house. There we go, that's better. Um, so yeah, anything under the mouse it will read is the is kind of the, the ideal situation. But again, you have to be able to use a mouse to, to do that. So maybe your learners would prefer to have everything read to them. Next, come on, there we go. So now we're gonna have a look at the speech to text and text to speech options. So you'll see here that when I've turned those settings on, I've gained two settings down at the bottom. Um, so these are the speech to text and text to speech, and it will read things aloud to you. So I'm just gonna show you that just now. So let's stop sharing the screen. You get a zoom in of me um, and we're gonna share, screen share, and I'm gonna share my whole screen instead. There we go. Okay, so you should now be able to see my whole screen and I am going to open up this Google Doc. Let's just double check that it's working. Just follow the stream. Okay, perfect. Okay, here's my Google Doc and here it is. Um, something that I've written just the other day. Uh, welcome to today's presentation. Today, we have been learning about ways to support our learners by using the accessibility settings. What is one thing that you'll take away from today's presentation? So I've got a few options as to how I can record that using my voice. The first one is to turn on the accessibility setting, and I'm gonna hit this microphone button. Now this dictation button will allow me to type in anywhere that requires you to type things in. So using Google, using Google Docs, um, Facebook, anywhere that you can type something in, it will allow you to do that. So all I'm gonna do is click where I want it to go and then hit that button. Welcome to today's presentation. Okay, and it's gonna stop after a while, um, a second or so when it detects no sound is, is being produced and you can turn it on again by pressing the button. Now using Google Docs and Google Slides and other things, you have other options available to you. And one of those things is you get an accessibility toolbar up at the top. So I'm gonna to go to tools and I'm going to come down to accessibility settings. I'm then gonna turn on all of these settings and you will notice that up on the top left, I now get an accessibility setting that appears. Um, things like I can, uh, speak, get the, the computer to read things back to me. I can show live edits, I can I can navigate through the document. But one of my favorite things that you can do is you can voice type and you can type through just using your voice, similarly to what, oops, ta -da, similarly to what we've just done. But this one is better. Um, it's only on your things like Google Docs, but it is a way to record a lot of text. So before it turned off, when we used the dictation down in the bottom right, this way will record screeds and screeds of text. And I've seen a lot of people using this in things like lecture notes, or if a teacher is talking, press this and it will record everything that is that is going on and, 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 and happening. Um, so for example, welcome to today's presentation. My name is Niall Ridgway, full stop, new line. Did it work? No, it didn't work. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna click that and we'll try that again. So I'm just gonna delete that. New line. Today's date is the 15th of February. Ah, typical that it stops working now. Um, so when you say things like new line or take a new line, it usually, it was yesterday, uh, we'll take that new line for you. Um, and you'll see that this one is a lot, I prefer to use this one. I find that the, the actual uh, ability and kind of how much it recognizes the words is, I feel it is stronger. Um, you can also change the language as well. So I can change it from English UK to things like Spanish. I can change the, the, the speech to um, uh, Polish any language that it has here. Um, and we've also got the ability to move it uh, around, okay? 
Now, something else that we can do with this document now that we've created it. So now as a teacher, I've created this document. I can now translate the document into another language. So I could type in, um, say, uh, Polish accessibility. Oh, I pressed the touch screen. Um, doc. And I can then translate this whole document into Polish. I'm just going to scroll down and translate this whole document into Polish. It's going to create a new document and it's going to translate all of the words that are on there. So if you have a learner who has English as an additional language, just record yourself speaking and then share that document with them. Now they have access to all the same learning that your people, that your English speaking pupils did. So I'm not gonna hit translate because it's gonna create a new document. Um, so something else that we can do, as I said, we can search on Google. So I'm just gonna type in Google. We're just gonna go to Google. Okay, here we are on Google. This is something that I get my class to search for. Heads up. Uh, just taking my time. Heads up, it uh, will empower your students to be able to search on their own. So they will now be able to search for things that you have not asked them to search for. Um, for example, Lego, for example, unicorns, anything that they have now, they've now got access to be able to search on the internet, um, which is amazing and fantastic. Um, but yeah, something to watch. So here I am on Google. You've got them just to open up Google and now they can search by pressing on this search by voice. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna just gonna say the Highland Council, just because that's the council that I'm currently working in. Okay, um, now as a student, I don't actually know what all this says. It, it doesn't mean anything to me. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna click on this button. So this is the select to speech to speak button. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the text that I want it to read in this box. Description. Highland is a council area in the Scottish Highlands and is the largest local government area in the United Kingdom. It was the seventh most populous council area in Scotland at the 2011 census. It shares borders with the council areas of Aberdeenshire, Argyll and Butte, Moray and Perth and Kinross. Wikipedia. Okay, so now as a student, I'm able to access this whole internet and work out what I need to click on um, purely by uh, using the, the speech to text and text to speech. Um, yeah, so that's one thing that, that you can use there. So I'm just gonna come off and I am going to stop sharing. You get a full screen view of me and I'm gonna share a screen again. I'm gonna share my tab. So let's come back on to this one. Okay. You should now be able to see that. Okay, like I said, we can translate the document into any of the languages that are listed. Um, and we can turn on these extra settings. Um, I showed you how to do that using Google Docs. This is the same on Google Slides. We've got Docs here and Slides up at the top. Now we can also use Google Slides presentation accessibility settings, which again are kind of hidden away. Um, so I have prepared a quick video for you, um, just showing you how to, you can use these. So I'll put that on just now. I'm gonna mute. Let's have a look at the Google Slides presentation accessibility settings. So if I move my mouse down to the bottom right, I can go back a slide, I can play the next, play all the slides, I can go forward a slide or jump to a different slide by number, I can open up the question and answer part of the presentation tool, I can look at the pre presenter notes, I can turn on the laser pointer and move that around the screen, I can also turn on captions as well. So I'll click the drop down arrow first and you can choose to have your captions at the top or the bottom and you can choose the size. I'm going for extra large. We can then turn on captions by pressing the CC and now you'll notice that I have captions that appear at the bottom of my Google Slides. These captions are great for learners who are learning to read as they are hearing. Um, similarly, as you would have a learner listen to an audiobook and read the words at the same time, they can do this with Google Slides.
You can also support learners who have English as an additional language as they're able to read the words as they hear them. It also helps anyone with a visual and hearing impairment and anyone who is further back from the speaker, maybe at the back of the room, who's unable to hear what they're saying, but they can read the smart board so they can see the words um, and the presentation as it is being spoken. So we're going to turn off captions now. We can look at the keyboard shortcuts. We can increase and decrease the full size, the full screen of the presentation. We can open speaker notes auto advance when played, so that'll link to the play button back there, and we can download the presentation and we can exit as well. Okay, welcome back. So yeah, using the, oh, it's done that funny thing again. Using the, da, 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 come on. Using the Google Slides accessibility settings are fantastic, especially the captions. Uh, like I said, it has a profanity filter as well, so you're not gonna get any swear words appearing, uh, which is great. You can also do this on Google Meet as well, but it's only for the person who's viewing. So your pupils are gonna have to turn that on for themselves. Nope, not play, come on. There we go. As we said, we can get your pupils to search using Google by pressing uh, this button. It's an absolute game changer, especially in the early years. Uh, you can just provide the tools and the pupils are able to search for themselves without even being able to type, without being able to use a mouse, uh, without being able to read and write, they can access the internet. Uh, so we can also use different fonts as well. So the dyslexia friendly font that is included on all Google products is called Chelsea Market. You'll see that all of the characters are weighted a little bit differently. Um, they're kind of like weighted more towards the bottom. For example, the M has really chunky bottoms and kind of thin tops. It's supposed to support learners uh, who have an indication towards dyslexia that the, to stop the, the, all the letters and numbers from jumping around the page. I also quite like it because it has the lowercase rounded A, um, something that not a lot of fonts have, and it does make it hard for teaching in, especially in the early years and in primary school, when you don't have that app, ah, it drives me mad. So yeah, I do enjoy using Chelsea Market. We've also got the Open Dyslexia font as well that you can add as an extension on your Google Chrome. Um, so just type in uh, Google uh, Chrome extension, Open Dyslexia font, and it's gonna change every piece of text to be a, a dyslexia friendly font. So you'll see here, um, when we Google search for the Highland Council, the text that appeared was uh, Times New Roman or something, Arial, probably Arial. Um, but here we have it in the open dyslexia font. You've also got these game changers, Screencastify and Moat. I've spoken about these loads of times and I'm not gonna spe stop speaking about them. Screencastify is amazing because it allows you to record your screen. So when you're giving out instructions to pupils, when you're giving out feedback to pupils, you're able to record yourself completing a task and you can have your webcam on as well. So it adds that personal touch. And um, so you can actually show your pupils what they need to do. You can also use Moat. So Moat is similar to Screencastify, um, but it's not the video aspect, it's just using your voice. So you can record voice notes for your pupils um, and, and support them that way. So leaving feedback, leaving instructions on Google Classroom. Um, if you've got learners who um, have English as an additional language, then Moat will automatically translate the, the script uh, from, from, from what it's picked up that you've said and translate that into a different language for you. Um, so yeah, definitely check these two out. Uh, absolute game changers. So we are approaching the end um, of today's session. Before we go on to using Mentimeter, I thought I would talk to you and show you the, the accessibility settings. So I'm just gonna load that up just now. And then I'm gonna share my screen with you. So let's stop sharing screen, reshare my screen. Um, and we are going to share an application window. Okay, whole screen it is then. Nope. Oh, wrong button. Let's try that again. Share. Share screen. Share audio as well. There we go. Share screen. Okay. So I'm just going to double check that you can see this. 
Yes, you can. Perfect. OK, so I am going to scroll down to accessibility. Don't know why it scrolled up. And we have now our accessibility options. So always show accessibility options in the system menu. We've turned that on. Now I'm going to manage accessibility settings. So I'm going to click here. And these are all of your accessibility settings that you can use. So we've already used the Chrome feedback. We can turn it on, and that's where we get the, the Chrome feedback settings. I'm going to turn it off again, though, before it starts speaking. You can enable select to speak. So that is the box that we dragged across um, to, to read whatever is on the screen and get it to speak back to us. You can open select to speak settings. So here, we're going to change our settings. So you can change the voice. So here, we've got US English is kind of like the go-to one. Uh, so especially for me, um, but we've also got the eSpeak English Scotland, England Scottish, um, and we've also got things like ba -ba -ba, receive pronunciation, Gaelic as well, and all these different languages. So if I click, so this is the Scottish accent. OK, so you'll hear that's the Scottish accent. I still do prefer the US English one. Um, I just find it's better. It's easier to understand, but absolutely up to your learners, whatever they prefer. Next, we have um, so our select our text to speech voice settings. So we can make the text to speech go faster. 100% is kind of the, the, the standard. You can change the pitch so you can make it sound higher or lower. You can change the volume as well to quiet or loud. Um, you can change the actual text. So let's try Gaelic. We could write in receive pronunciation. We can try, um, where's the standard one gone? English. And this is what? So this is the one Hi, I use. I'm your text-to-speech text voice. OK. So there's the different settings you can play around with. Select one, whichever one suits your learner best. We've got preferred voices, so you can change up. So if you have um, a piece of Arabic text, then it's going to be the Arabic one. This is only oh, this is only available if you have more than one option for that, that language. So English, I have English, Scottish, um, received pronunciation, and US English. And down at the bottom, our last things, we've got our speech engine. So our text-to-speak extension you can get. And you've got the Chrome OS text-to-speak extension as well. So this is just um, using text-to-speech ac across the internet and across your Chromebook. So all the different languages that you can get. So this is where you're going to get them from. It was in settings. And you can get more languages by clicking on these buttons here. So I'm going to close this now. That's a great timing. <laughs> that is fantastic. Um, so I'm going to close this down. I'm going to open up. And we are going to drag this to the left. And we're going to put you on the right. There we go. OK. Stop sharing. And we are going to reshare again my Chrome tab for accessibility features. OK, there we go. We're going to have a look at Menti now. So if you are on a laptop device or anything like a computer, you can open up a new tab. That would be amazing, please. Um, and go to menti.com. It's the, the website that's here. And it would be amazing if you could type in this code, 84. 8678. And all you're going to do is I would like you please to answer what is one thing that you have taken away from today's session? Maybe it is using accessibility settings to support all of your learners. Um, maybe something like using the keyboard. I'll show you the keyboard just now if you like um, for the emojis. I don't know why I didn't include that there. So here I have, I can right click and nope, where's it gone? If the emoji doesn't appear there, the option for emojis, pop down here and go accessibility and come down to on-screen keyboard. So now the on-screen keyboard is turned on. I can go to Menti and I can double click 
and on-screen keyboard will appear when I press the button in the bottom. Now I have, I don't know if you're able to see that actually. Are you able to see that? No, let's change the sharing settings. Full screen share, there you go. There we go, okay. Now I have a keyboard that appears down in the bottom. Yep, and I can type using the keyboard or I can press this button and I can get access to all of the emojis. So these are the ones I've most recently used. Um, to scroll through, you just click and drag left to right or right to left um, and scroll through them all to add them in. And then you just click to add one in, okay. So that's all the emojis and that's how you access them. So it'd be great if you could please go to menti.com and type in this code here, 848678. And in just a second, I will have a look and see um, what your feedback is and what you're thinking. So what is one thing that you will take away from today's session? Oh, loads of different things. This is great. Okay. So we've got, disappear. There we go. Um, Chelsea Market. Yes, uh, definitely Chelsea Market has been a game changer, certainly in my uh, teaching. Um, yep, using Ch Chelsea Market font, dyslexia font, confidence, which is great. I like that one. Dictation button, large mouse cursor, um, full screen magnifier, using accessibility. We've got things like sticky keys, um, changing cursors, uh, usefulness, thank you. Um, how to support learners, lots of, lots of great things there. So I will keep this on for just a second as they all come in. Adapt, that's a good word, I like that one. Screencastify, yep. If you are a Google trainer as well, so if you set your Google uh, certifications, then you will get um, the full Screencastify as well for free uh, for the year. So yeah, definitely check it out. How to support learners, the range of tools. There's honestly so many things. And that's the thing. The accessibility settings are for everyone. These are all things that I use daily. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, anyone in your school or at home who has an additional support need. It can be absolutely anyone. So, yeah. These are brilliant. Oh, there's loads of diff different things coming in now. Select to speak. Yep. Wide range of features. Generally trying things. Yeah, exactly. Just go and play about with it and have fun. Uh, you can turn things on, turn things off. If you get stuck, let me know. Like if you get stuck on full screen magnifier, do let me know and I'll see if I can help you out. Um, yeah. So one more minute, we'll wait for these to come in. You can use the codes. It's up at the top if you want to join in. 84, 86, 78. Go to menti.com and whack in any of your feedback. It's quite nice seeing, we've had 22 people uh, who have commented. I can see there's 40 on the live uh, stream just now, which is amazing numbers. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Oh, more things coming in. Brilliant, Castify, Screencastify. Dictation, uh, knowledge, confidence, yeah. Brilliant, Slide to Speak. I'm so glad everyone's using Slide to Speak, it is great. <laughs> Okay, so that is us approaching the end. Um, if you have any questions, pop them into the chat or you can come back. I think it's at half past two. We're doing a live chat and answering any questions that you've got from all the presenters from today. Um, so if you've got any questions, pop along there. Don't put me on the spot, please. <laughs> um, and yeah, I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll keep these up. Oh, brilliant. There's still more coming in. Fantastic using accessibility, importance, Google search by voice, it, honestly, it's so good. It, even just that freedom for your, your class to now be able to access 
the internet and access everything on their Chromebook is just incredible. So, yeah. Okay, we will call it a day there. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions, you can come today at the chat, pop them into the comments. Can't see any there. Um, or you can follow me on Twitter at Niall Ridgeway. My name is just below the video there. See you later. Bye. Bye.